All right, so this is what we want. Forwards. Faster. Slower. Stop. Reverse. Emergency stop. Reset. Jog backwards. Jog forwards. This is the Sealy SM27 variant of the lathe, a very close cousin of the uh, Clark CL430, a not too distant relation of the Warco lathe. And uh, come on, boys, the new tool lathe looks very similar. Chester tools have come up with something. Not too distant a cousin, I think. Looking at MadeInChina.com, there are over 2,500 lathe manufacturers across many provinces. Uh, pretty much the same thing from different places with different build qualities. We start in the pulley enclosure, we need to remove the jockey wheel and the pulley from the motor shaft. So to take the jockey wheel out, loosen up your motor. Loosen off the retaining nut. By the way, don't just drop your motor up and down because you can crush wires up under here. So watch what you're doing. We've slid the jockey wheel up, locked it. So this belt will come out. Top belt off, loosen jockey wheel, second belt off on the jockey wheel. We remade its little spindle, bored it and put seal bearings in. We've put it on with a right chunky washer to give better pressure on this supporting plate. And the old lugs were a bit shallow, so it didn't engage far, and the new lugs just deeper. So new bearings, bigger lugs, chunky washer, jobs are good. Un. The combination of belts that work for me, this one, and this one. I did buy some replacements at Machine Mart and got slightly the wrong size. So these work on the Sealy. When you're taking the pulley off, you want a proper pulley removal tool. 
and this and this one has got a ball bearing at the end so it won't mar your spindle control with a pulley removing tool we can pull this out under control The motor bracket swings on a pivot to allow tensioning of a belt. We access the pivot bar by drilling through the enclosure box. A little hunting around was needed and the scales give an idea of where I was. Now remove the tensioning stay from the top of the motor bracket, then take out your split pin from the pivot and drive your pivot bar out. The motor's out, it's on its mounting frame, the wiring harness is still attached. We can check out the rating plate we're now going to unhook the wiring, take the wiring harness out completely. We've kept a note of all the contacts so we can reinstall if need be and photos as well. I've beefed up the washer on the pivot bar and feathered the end of the bar just to make an easier reinstall. So, looking at the underside of the old motor. So in old money, it's giving you 4.35 inches, which in new money is 110.4. And between centres, lengthways, 90.26 roughly. Okay. Radio. We've put studs in. We'll go across the studs first, widthwise. Across the studs, widthwise, old money, 4.72, new money, uh, 120. Along the studs, 3.9, old money, 4.5. And your stud width, don't forget to subtract that. Oh, new money, 9.5, old money, 0.375. I adapted a metric mount motor and bored out the pulley uh, for a larger motor shaft. To adapt the footprint to the mount frame, mild steel runners were made for the frame and for the motor uh, and they were mounted at the same uh, gauge. I added little wings to the top rail of the motor so I could slide it fore and aft before committing to the final position. When I got to the sweet spot we drilled it through and uh, permanently bolted it in place. Bolts at the top, machine screws at the bottom for clearance. But ideally, just buy a bog standard motor with the same footprint, same output shaft, plenty out there, make life easy.
the original stay hit the scrap bin and a beefed up fitting was made with wing nuts and thick washers sandwiching two rubber roofing washers. Tensioning the belt, the weight of the motor gives pretty much enough tension. So what I'll do, I'll give it a little tighten there. That feels good. Check the belt. That's fine. Nice. The electrics ran externally to the uh, new control and the variable frequency drive was housed in a snap lid plastic craft box. Thank you.